Hey, Bridging the Gap. What's going on, fam? We are um, over here. <laughs> Get ready to do this video. Uh, we want to introduce you guys. We have a couple of different projects in Ghana, and we introduce you to Cornelius, and uh, we want to introduce you to the farming project and, and the people of, uh, that are going to be associated with that um, because the next couple of videos, we're going to kind of detail what the need is on both these projects for people who want to become involved in, in either one of them, ministry or business. So um, we want to share with you just a couple of quick photos, maybe a story or two um, about our group in the Volta region. Well, they actually all live in Accra, but yeah. the project is in Volta. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Before we start sharing pictures? No. We're going to show the picture of the team. <clears throat> so this is our team in Ghana. The boots on the ground, as they say. This was actually the day we flew in, so we just hopped off the plane, comfy, cozy, and decided to take a photo. Um, on the left there is Mr. Hilarious McCash Akpa. We call him Cash Man. McCash mm -hmm. is literally... His middle name, first name, Hilarious. Um, just next to Hilarious is his wife, Selassie. And then... You said it right. Yeah, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then next to, in between Selassie and Cheryl is Na. Na is the fiance of... Um, Magnus. Magnus. We, let's see, let me make sure I say this right. We Dong. Um, Magnus is just to my left, right on the picture. They are actually engaged to be married, and um, I think that's going to take place this May. Um, and then next to Magnus is Courage, which is our, our lawyer, counsel for the project. Um, I would tell y'all Courage's last name, but I ain't trying to tear it up, and I know I'm not going to say it right. <laughs> Plus, that brother's first name is so cool, he don't really need a last name. <laughs> so he just goes by by Courage, is all I call him. Um Real interesting um, kind of story about the Volta region, because that's where the farming project is going to take place. Um, in the Volta region, they named their, their children um, after a virtue. Mm -hmm. So Hilarious is, um, told us he's kind of got two things. It's, it's male, you know, kind of counterpart to Hillary. Um, but it's also a virtue to make people laugh, to, 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 to please people. people. Um, and then courage is off, uh, obviously a virtue. We met a young man up there that had a, a name that I can't remember that was real interesting. It was a virtue. Um, was it wisdom? It wasn't wisdom. It was something. I, don't know. I know I know what you're talking about. Was it at one of the restaurants? Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. They had a really cool name, but they actually named their children after virtue. So hilarious and... Um, Courage, you're from the Volta region. Mm -hmm. So, why Volta? Right? How do we pick that? Most people want to go to, to Ghana, want to be in Accra, um, and try to strike up business there. Um, the reason we picked Volta, well, we were there for the Jamestown to Jamestown tour. This is an interesting story, and I'm telling you this because God led us to Volta. We didn't pick Volta. We didn't know anything about Volta on our second trip. With not just pick Volta, but led us to Ghana. this whole project. Yeah. Period. He, he led us to all of it, but this specific piece of why Volta and not some other region, mm -hmm. uh, we were at the Jamestown to Jamestown tour at a business summit. And it was a two-day summit. We were having lunch one day and met a brother who who uh, we didn't know. I, I don't even think he was part of the Jamestown tour. He was just at the business summit. He's from the States. And he was telling us he had just come back from the Volta region. And he was telling us how beautiful it was and, and that you could buy property, like $5,000 an acre is what property is going for out there. And Volta is not really far from Accra in terms of distance because um, the roads are not that good. It takes some time to drive it, but it's not that far. Accra is really crowded. So it's going to have to, you're going to have to go out outside of Accra um, over these next couple of decades to get where you want to be. So Volta seemed like a good place to go. Um, so we were just thinking about let's go explore that cheap land. Mm -hmm. That was it. All right. So while we were there for Jamestown to Jamestown, one of our last nights there, an associate here, a mutual associate of myself and Hilarious, um, connected us and we went out to dinner. 
And so we're talking about all kinds of different stuff. And and without knowing anything, I just said, you know, that the next time we come back to Ghana, we want to go to the Volta region. We hear there's there's land and, and stuff up there that's fairly cheap and and we want to go check it out. Do you guys know anything about Volta? He looked at me, he laughed. He says, I grew up in Volta. I'm from Volta. Um, and so we started talking and it just grew from there. Not only is he from Volta, he's got connections to the chiefs in Volta and, and people are in, in position to pull this project together. And so for the last, I don't know, since August, right? Five months or so, they've been doing just that, working behind the scenes to pull all the pieces of this project together. Um, and they've really covered all bases, which is really, really cool to have people on the ground who know the country, who know the area in the country, who have connections to those who who control the land. The chiefs control the land. Right. And, and, and I think it's too, it's important for people to, for, to have someone there that knows people, but also um, to have people on the ground that are trustworthy. Right. Like they've been, you know, vetted and proven that they are, you know, good at what they do, number one, but they're trustworthy. I mean, just upstanding yeah. people. And like Cornelius, just mm-hmm. accountable with everything. You know, we, we've had to put some investment into this, getting the business plan put together and, you know, them traveling back and forth and us traveling over there. And they, they, they have taken care of us. It's, it's almost, uh, you know, it's a bit much, actually, how much they go out of their way to try to take care of us. And um, it's appreciated, it's much appreciated, and and it, we couldn't have picked better people to work with mm-hmm. on a continent where we have no experience. <laughs> Just yeah. couldn't have picked better people. Right. And knew one person <laughs> going. Right. We knew on one first person. Visit. Yeah. We knew Sam. Sam. We didn't know we Sam. We didn't know Sam. him either. We yeah. met him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after our first trip, we knew one person. Yeah. Um, what else? Is there anything else about Volta we want to talk about? Um, yeah, when we went to meet with the Yeah, yeah, the I'm people. saying before we show the pictures. You want to show those now? Yeah. All right. Just a couple quick photos, guys, of, of our trip to the Volta region, mainly concerning the farming project. There's plenty of other photos, but we just want to talk about the farming project for this video. So this is... Uh, a meeting we had with the, the chief of the Awudame people, which is the region of, of the Volta, the, the, the community of the Volta region where we chose to, um, to engage for the, for the agriculture project. Um, these are some of the elders um, and queen mothers. This is uh, a photo of it's like the, the other side of the room. Yeah, yeah, it's opposite of the elders and, and, and the queen mothers. And, and on the left-hand side there in the center of that table, that is the chief of the Awudame people. Um, and you'll see we are off to the to the side. There is uh, Magnus, Hilarious, myself, Cheryl, um, and Courage at the end of the table. And we're having this meeting talking about what we want to do in this community. Um. The meeting went well. There's a lot of stuff planned. Um, I'll just throw this in there. If you guys can make the tour in July, make it. It's going to be epic. There's going to be some big things taking place. Um, But it was just, again, the opportunity to be able to go home, connect, find something meaningful that we can do on the continent that will benefit um, whole communities of people. And to be received so you know, received so warmly, um, and the excitement, the encouragement that we got from the people in the room. So it was really kind of cool. They had um, a rep- a group of young folks that represented um, the young people on the chief's council, and one of the young men. I'm gonna try to say this right. When you when you live in Ghana, you graduate college. You, you're supposed to put in a year of service for the country. And so he had to travel to Accra um, to work that next day, putting in his year of service. He just graduated college. It's a three hour drive. He decided that he was not going to go to Accra to prepare for work the next day, that he wanted to stay and be a part of this because that's how important it is to them. He didn't want to miss anything. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So from the elderly people to the to the folks our age to the young folks who are just getting out of college, this is a huge huge deal for them and and it's it, you know to see that kind of interest from the young folks is probably the thing that stood out to me most. And the th th sec <laughs> second thing that stood out to me is the chief in this area speaks English extremely well. Mm -hmm. We've been to a couple of different places where we've had a chance to engage with chiefs and and it was really cool that where we're going to be putting down roots and because we're going to be moving to the Volta region where we're going to be, you know, planting our flag from a business standpoint initially in the Volta region and the chief that we're connected to to help us do that is somebody we're going to be able to communicate with clearly, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to show some of the pictures after the meeting? Or? Mm, no, I don't think so. No, you know, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> So, you guys are probably wondering, why farming? Why agriculture? And quite honestly, we're so was farmers. I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when, we're business people. We're when, not farmers. When this thing came up, like I said, we were looking at five or ten acres. You know, at 5000 a piece, that's 50 grand or so to build some stuff and generate some revenue. Whatever, right? We had no intentions on farming, don't know anything about farming for the most part. But farming is huge. And as we grow in the understanding of the continent and the resources on the continent, um, we were looking at an article just today mm -hmm. that it says, help me with these figures, baby, because you were reading it, 10 billion. One, in, one trillion. No, no, no. In 2000, I want to give them the projection oh, of how it's grown from 2010. 2010. Agriculture on the continent was $10 billion, right? I believe so. Yep. Outside investment, mm -hmm. foreign investment in agriculture on the continent was $10 billion. This was projecting that by the end of this year, outside investment in 2020 will be $45 billion. Mm -hmm. Outside investment, foreign investment in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Remember, we told you that the continent has everything. The world doesn't need, or Africa doesn't need the world. The world needs Africa. Mm -hmm. So all of these outside dollars are coming in for the natural resources and farming is there's enough agrable land on the continent to feed the entire world. Mm -hmm. So this projection, uh, there's a U, uh, UN reported that the World Bank uh, estimated that by 2030, mm -hmm. agriculture in Ghana will be a trillion dollar a year business. Mm -hmm trillion dollar a year 45 billion right now mm -hmm. how far you got to grow in the next 10 years to reach a trillion dollars right there's money in it right and the beautiful thing is the people there want to farm mm -hmm. they have the land to farm mm -hmm. we just need to help them with some tools and some equipment and point them in the right direction give them the technology that they need to make it as profitable as it can be and benefit everybody involved. Right. It is a win-win-win scenario. Mm -hmm. So that's the crew. Um, this is the mission. This is where we're going to cut our chops in Ghana on the business side. And we're going to be asking those of you who have an interest in participating um, in any kind of business in Ghana, if you don't have a direction or you don't know how to get started and you want to work with us until you're ready to do whatever it is you want to do. This is open to anyone and everyone. We need all the help we, we can get. And we need to have as many people from the diaspora involved in this project as we can. We want to wrap our arms as a collective around the continent mm -hmm. and the resources of the continent to benefit people of the continent, right. no matter where you're at. Right. That's an important thing. Got anything else to add? You're awful quiet. Um, no, I'm just... You're going to have people up here talk about it. Shut up and let her talk. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a good it's a good project. And it's well planned out. And when we get to the point where we share all the details for those who want to be involved, um, you'll be able to see why we're excited about it. I think... I don't know. I'm just amazed at how we got here <laughs> not know we didn't know about a one trillion dollar had no idea industry or anything like that
Yeah, you can. Yeah. All right. So, on our first trip to Ghana, Sam Jr. had um, connected us with a couple prophets um, in Ghana, both of which were, were, were extremely accurate in things they, they spoke over our lives and about our lives, um, but they projected some things. Prophet Jimmy, the second prophet we met with, the very first thing out of his mouth was, I see land, I see lots of land, farmland, just massive farmland everywhere. And then he went on to say some other things. And at that first thing that came out of his mouth, me and Cheryl looked at each other like, what is this? What's he talking about? Right. Right. So then he said some other things that didn't really make sense to us. Mm -hmm. But then he started talking about us and over us and where our hearts were and what he, what he, what we wanted to do. And he started he prophesying over um, what we're doing in the north with Cornelius. And we didn't know Cornelius at the time. He said, I see some charitable work, some sort of foundation. Mm -hmm. Helping women, I think he even said. He said, helping women specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a foundation. The money we're giving to, to Cornelius now is coming from our foundation. Mm -hmm. These things were spoken and we had no clue. Mm -hmm. So we didn't even realize until this last trip to Ghana, we went back and listened to what Prophet Jimmy said because of something else that prompted us to like, wow, let's go back and listen to that again. Mm -hmm. The first thing out of his mouth was farm. Yep. And we were completely confused. Like, what kind of prophet are you? <laughs> right. We don't do farming. <laughs> <laughs> don't know nothing about it. Not sure interested in it. Farm. Right. Look, my dad had a farm for a minute when I was young. I ain't even <laughs> thinking about trying to farm nothing. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's just been a really, yeah. really. Everything's just falling in place. Without us having to even ask too much or we're not going after anything. We're not, you know, pressing. It's just everything's falling in place. So we know it's totally outside of us yeah. that this is happening. It's not, you know. This was supposed to be. We're good. It. We ain't that good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. This was supposed to be some Airbnbs, y'all. Keep right. that in mind. That's right. all we had in mind. Right. Something small for us, something to generate some income and a place for us to settle down in the Volta region because mm -hmm. we see that being where Accra is going to grow to. Mm -hmm. We had no no idea, none whatsoever, but mm -hmm. it is a massive industry. Yeah. And the World Bank is telling you it's going to be a trillion dollar a year industry in the next 10 years. Yes. 45 billion to a trillion is a whole lot of growth, mm -hmm. whole lot of growth. So we want to start here and branch out mm -hmm. and snatch up as much of that trillion dollars a year as we can possibly get our hands on. And we want y'all to ride with us. Mm -hmm. and we want to make sure everywhere we do projects like this initial project that we are taking care of the people in that community. Because if it's not about them, then the rest of it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. This has got to be a major win for everybody involved. Right. That means you guys working with us. That means us. That means the... The, the people of the communities, the chiefs, the elders, everybody mm -hmm. has got to win or is, is pointless. It's fruitless. Yep. So with that, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. And the next time we come back and talk about this particular project, we'll be laying out a little bit more of the vision. Right. Mm -hmm. So you guys will know whether it's something you want to get involved in or where our hearts at and what we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. in the Volta region. Kind of like we did with with um, with um, Cornelius. And, and um, we're going to lay out how to engage in both those projects. That'll be the next couple of videos. Lord willing. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. if you are subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you can get our updates, especially if you're interested in uh, investment opportunities. And also there'll be a link where you can sign up on our mailing list. So we'll send updates there just in case you um, miss the video update. Get ready, folks. It's about to kick off. About to get busy on the continent. ASAP. Bye.